Nancy Pelosi's possible visit to Taiwan, the Chinese government has warned the U.S. will be met with force if she visits the island. At the same time, the Chinese people will never allow any foreign forces to bully, oppress or enslave us. Anyone who dares to try to do that will have their heads bashed blooded against the Great Wall of Steel, forged by over 1.4 billion Chinese people. And the biggest problem we have, like with China, is that they're, t they're sucking money out of this country. Then the, the horrible part is they then loan it back to us. So China takes the money out, they then loan it back. Hey look, I know lots of folks in China. They think we are the dumbest son of a bitches in the world, alright? They think our representatives don't know what they're doing. They laugh at us behind our back. Uh, my administration has maintained a very constructive relationship with the Chinese government. Uh, we believe very much in a peaceful, rising China. Uh, we think we have much more to fear from a, a weak, chaotic China than a China that continues to progress and uh, fulfill. The Tensions between USA and China have escalated since the pandemic. We have seen a change of leadership in the US. However, nothing has changed between the relation with China. Today, we look at the history of the relationship between USA and China. Hi guys, my name is Harry and welcome to my channel History with Harry. Make sure to drop a like if you like this video and hit the subscribe button if you want to learn history as a story. People's Republic of China was established in 1949. Mao Zedong established the communist government and dragged Chiang Kai-shek and his troops to Taiwan. The United States backed him and supported Chiang during his exile in Taipei setting the stage for limited U.S. relations with mainland China. In 1950, the Korean War broke out. The Soviet-backed North Korean People's Army started invasion of South Korea. The United Nations and the United States rushed to help South Korea's defense. China was in support of the Communist North and they retaliated when South Korea and U.S. approached their borders. As many as 4 million people died in the three-year conflict until the United Nations, China, and North Korea signed an armistice agreement in 1953. In 1954, People's Republic of China started bombarding on Matsu and Kinmen Islands, marking the start of first Taiwan Strait crisis. China's goal was to include Taiwan in PRC and mark an end to Chiang Kai-shek. In Washington, President Dwight Eisenhower signed a mutual defense treaty with Chiang's nationalists. In 1955, USA threatened a nuclear attack on China, which helped in de-escalating the issue and saved everyone from facing another world war. People's Republic of China has always demonstrated expansionist tactics. Tibet was under control of PRC since 1951. However, in 1959, a widespread uprising occurred in Lhasa. 1.5 million Tibetans had to lose their life, which was one-fifth of their population at that time. And the Dalai Lama flee to India. United States, on the other hand, joined the UN and condemned PRC of human rights violation, while CIA continued supporting Tibetans by supplying arms. In 1964, during US-Vietnam War, China joined the nuclear club and tested its first atomic bomb. US wanted to eliminate Ho Chi Minh, who had a communist ideology. Mao always supported Ho Chi Minh as a fellow comrade and supported Vietnam with capital and military support. China offered 600 million US dollars and trained Vietnamese soldiers and equipped them with weapons. China's radical industrialization policies, known as the Great Leap Forward, led the Soviet Union to withdraw its advisors. For the first time since 1949, China was open to build diplomatic relation with the US. In 1971, China invited United States ping pong team accompanied by journalists who were the first Americans to enter China after 1949. Same year, 
in June, Secretary of the State Henry Kissinger made a secret trip to China. Shortly thereafter, the United Nations recognized the People's Republic of China and removed Chiang Kai-shek's Republic of China seat of Taiwan. In 1972, after the ping-pong diplomacy, President Nixon visited China for eight days, where he met Chairman Mao and signed Shanghai Communique. The communique helped improve U.S.-Sino relations and helped PRC better their relation with Taiwan. In the 1980s, relationship of China and U.S. flourished under Reagan's era. U.S. started providing military support to China under a fear of Soviet expansion in Asia. But it was a short-lived relationship that only lasted a few years. In the spring of 1989, thousands of students held demonstrations in Beijing's Tiananmen Square demanding democratic reforms and an end to corruption. The Chinese government sent in military troops to clear the square, leaving hundreds of protesters dead. In response, the US government suspended military sales to Beijing and froze relation. The Nationalist Party's Li Tanghui won Taiwan's first free presidential elections by a large margin in March 1996. The elections came after a year when China recalled its ambassador after President Clinton authorized a visit by Li, reversing a 15-year-old U.S. policy against granting visas to Taiwan's leaders. In 1996, U.S. and China agreed to exchange officials again. NATO accidentally bombed the Chinese embassy in Belgrade during its campaign against Serbian forces occupying Kosovo in 1999, which shook U.S.-Sino relations. The United States and NATO offered apologies for the series of U.S. intelligence mistakes that led to the deadly bombing, but thousands of Chinese demonstrators protested throughout the country attacking U.S. official property. President Clinton signed the U.S.-China Relation Act of 2000 in October, granting Beijing permanent normal trade relation with the United States and paving the way for China to join the World Trade Organization in 2001. Between 1980 and 2004, U.S.-China trade rose from $5 billion to $231 billion. In 2006, China surpassed Mexico as the United States' second biggest trade partner after Canada. In September 2008, China surpassed Japan to become the largest holder of U.S. debt or treasuries at around $600 billion. The growing interdependence between the U.S. and Chinese economies became evident as a financial crisis threatened the world economy fueling concerns over U.S.-China economic imbalances. After the 2008 recession, China emerged as the second largest economy in 2010, valued at 1.3 trillion U.S. dollars. And at the start of 2011, China reported a GDP of 5.8 trillion U.S. dollars. In 2012, the United States, the European Union, and Japan filed a request for consultation with China at the World Trade Organization over its restriction on exporting rare earth metals. The United States and its allies contended that China's quota violated international trade norms, forcing multinational firms that use the metals to relocate to China. China called this move rash and unfair while vowing to defend its rights in trade dispute. Xi Jinping replaced Hu Jintao as president, Communist Party General Secretary and chairman of the Central Military Commission in November 2012. She delivered a series of speeches on the rejuvenation of China. In June of 2013, President Obama hosted President Xi 
for a shirt sleeve summit at the Sunnylands Estate in California in a bid to build a personal repo with his counterpart and ease tense US-China relations. The leaders pledged to cooperate more effectively on pressing bilateral, regional and global issues, including climate change and North Korea. Obama and Xi also vowed to establish a new model of relations, a nod to Xi's concept of establishing a new type of great power relations for the United States and China. Following which, both countries shared a fair trading relation until 2017. They're using our country as a piggy bank to rebuild China. The Trump administration in 2018 declared a trade war on China by sweeping tariffs on Chinese import worth 50 billion US dollars in March and new tariffs of 38 billion dollars in June. The measure targeted goods including clothing, shoes, electronics and medical devices. China retaliated with its own tariffs on more than 500 US products. The reprisal also valued around $34 billion. Targeted commodities such as beef, dairy, seafood and soybeans. President Trump and members of his administration believed that China was quote, un ripping off unquote, the United States, taking advantage of free trade rules to detriment of US firms operating in China. Beijing criticized the Trump's administration moves as, quote, trade bullying, unquote, and cautions that tariffs could trigger global market unrest. Meng Wanzhou, the chief financial officer of Chinese telecom and electronics company Huawei, was arrested in Canada at the United States' request. The U.S. Justice Department alleged Huawei and Meng violated trade sanctions against Iran and committed fraud and requested her extradition. Huawei sued the United States in a separate lawsuit for banning U.S. federal agencies from using the telecom's giant's equipment. In a battle with Beijing for technological supremacy, the Trump administration launched an aggressive campaign warning other countries not to use Huawei equipment to build 5G networks, claiming the Chinese government could use the company to spy. In November of 2019, President Trump signed the Hong Kong Human Rights and Democracy Act after it passed in the US Congress with overwhelming majorities. The legislation authorized the United States to sanction individuals responsible for human rights abuses in Hong Kong. It also required U.S. officials to evaluate every year whether Hong Kong enjoys a high degree of autonomy from Beijing. Many of the pro-democracy protesters who were demonstrating celebrated the bill's passage. Chinese officials condemned the move and imposed sanction on several US-based organizations and suspended US worship visits to Hong Kong. Use this term, he says ethnicity does not cause the virus. Why do you keep using this? A lot of it comes say from it's China. racist. It's not racist at all, no, not at all. It comes from China, that's why. It comes from China, I and want to be accurate. Yeah, please, John, please. Are you comfortable uh, I have with a great, this term? I have great love uh, for all of the people from our country. But uh, as you know, China tried to say at one point, maybe they stopped now, that it was caused by American soldiers. That can't happen. It's not going to happen. Not as long as I'm president. Uh, it comes from China. COVID-19 no longer requires any introduction. It acted as a catalyst to the trade war between the two countries. A Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson claimed without evidence that the United States military brought the virus to China, while President Trump made repeated references to the quote, Chinese virus, unquote, which he said spread because of failures by the Chinese government. Amid which chain of events followed. The Chinese government expelled at least 13 journalists from three US newspapers, the New York Times, 
Wall Street Journal, and Washington Post, whose press credentials were set to expire in 2020. The US government decided to limit the number of Chinese journalists from five state-run media outlets in the United States to 100, down from 160, and designated those outlets as foreign mission. Two weeks after Beijing passed a new national security law for Hong Kong, President Trump signed an executive order ending the city's preferential trade status with the United States. He also signed legislation to sanction officials and businesses that undermine Hong Kong's freedom and autonomy. Chinese officials threatened to impose retaliatory sanctions on the U.S. individuals and entities. They denounced what they called U.S. interference in China's internal affairs, including Washington's announcement a day earlier declaring most of Beijing's claim in the South China Sea illegal. The United States ordered China to close its consulate in Houston, Texas, alleging that it was a hub of espionage and intellectual property theft. China condemned the order and retaliated by closing the U.S. consulate in Chengdu. In the same week, Washington indicted two Chinese hackers for allegedly stealing coronavirus vaccine research and sanctioned 11 Chinese companies for their reported role in human rights abuses in Xinjiang. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo delivered a speech titled, quote, Communist China and the Free World's Future, unquote, signaling a profound shift in U.S. policy. He declared that the era of engagement with the Chinese Communist Party is over. On Trump's last day in office, Pompeo declared that China was committing crimes against humanity and genocide against Uyghurs, a Muslim ethnic group primarily from China's Xinjiang region. The first in-person meeting between top Biden administration officials and Chinese officials in Alaska in 2021 reflected deep disagreement between the two sides and ended without a joint statement. NATO, which has focused on deterring Russian aggression and terrorism in recent years, released a communique expanding the alliance's focus to include threats from China, such as its nuclear weapon development and military modernization. Quote, China's stated ambitions and assertive behavior present systematic challenge to the rules-based international order and to areas relevant to alliance security. Unquote. The statement said, it was the first time that a NATO communique referenced threats from China. The declaration came as the Biden administration pushed its allies to collectively respond to China. The United States imposed a diplomatic boycott of the Winter Olympics in Beijing, citing the Chinese government's human rights abuses in Xinjiang and elsewhere. A handful of other countries, including Australia, Canada, and the United Kingdom, also refused to send officials to the Games. Chinese officials said that the United States was trying to politicize sports, create divisions, and provoke confrontation. Amid Russia-Ukraine war, Biden held a video call with Xi and threatened of consequences if China provided material support to Russia. Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan has again sparked the issue of one China. It's very difficult to foresee how would the two superpowers relation will impact the geopolitics. Thanks a lot for joining. Please do comment if you have any feedback and subscribe to the channel if you like this video.